What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Friday. I'm getting set up for my live stream coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern. And man, mm. I don't know what it is about Chris Canty. Chris Canty hates Dak Prescott. He is always pounding, sorry, pounding really hard on him. And this is the craziest, craziest thing that I think I've ever heard here. I, I have to play this. I'm sorry. I have to play this. L let's listen to this. This is crazy. The Cowboys are doing the right thing after doing the wrong thing. I, I think I think that's what I got out of this. Having maximum cap relief, that doesn't necessarily help them this year. And if you're Dak Prescott, what's the rush? You see where the quarterback market is going. It only makes sense for you to wait. But why I say it makes sense for the Dallas Cowboys is because we are going to get to a point in the quarterback market where there's going to be an organization that doesn't deem it worth it to extend the guy that they currently have, especially if the quarterback doesn't have any remaining years on his contract. So to me, the window for the Dallas Cowboys to extend Dak Prescott ended at the end of the 2023 offseason. Like the fact that they didn't get a contract done last year, I think they are pot committed to going down this road and seeing what Dak Prescott can do in 2024 before they address his contract, if they address his contract. If you're saying the Cowboys are handling it correctly because they didn't handle it correctly. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can, we can <laughs> yeah. go all the way back to the 2018 off. What was that? The 2018 offseason, 2019 offseason, where they decided they were going to pay Ezekiel Elliott right, before ridiculous. they paid the quarterback. Right. Dak was on a rookie deal. He was a fourth round pick, four year contract. They should have extended him the first minute they got because he was a three year starter at that point. They knew he was the future at that position. If you extend him then, then you could take advantage of the remaining years on that rookie contract, similar to what the Jacksonville Jaguars are doing in this circumstance, instead of going down the road of having a franchise tag them multiple times and then giving them the bag with a giving them the bag and a no tag clause. Okay, I, I want to make sure it's I'm a lot of it's a lot no, of. No, I want to make sure I'm understanding this right. Yeah. So you're you're looking at this situation. So we're, if we're losing using Trevor Lawrence as, hey, that's smart. Extend a guy with two years left on his rookie deal in order to get the low number deals before you get the high number, and the high number won't even be as high by the time we get there. You'll never get to that point. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. You'll never get to that point. And so what you're saying is if, if the Jaguars are the model to do this right, the Cowboys have already done it wrong. So right now, the worst thing you could do is extend him because then you never have the low years, in essence. So basically you're saying you have to let him walk? After this, after this season, because you have to reset your quarterback finances? Well, what are your choices? You either let him walk or you're going to be non-competitive because he's going to take up so much of your cap. Remember, there is no extension to be had here. Right, it's a new deal. It's a new deal. Right. So you're going to be paying him, what, $60 million a year on a four- or five-year contract? Your team is going to be non-competitive. But are you competitive if he walks? Oh! Uh, uh, if you can reallocate those assets... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Positions and have a quarterback at a below market deal that can be competent, just average. There's an argument to be made. Mm. I know you don't love Russell Wilson. I forgot because average quarterbacks are winning Super Bowls and lots like, of games. Think about it. Like, what, what's CD Lamb's contract going to look like? $34 million a year, 30, somewhere around there? See, but I wouldn't do no, no, that. No, 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 just listen to me. Yeah, just yeah. listen to me. Let's, let's play out the hypothetical. Mm -hmm. CD Lamb is going to get $34 million, $33, $34 million a year. Michael Parsons wants to be the highest paid non quarterback in the league. That's $35, $36 million a year. That's $70 million. Like, I mean, Dak Prescott's contract is going to be $60 million. So for $10 million bucks more, I can get top of the market CeeDee Lamb and top of the market Michael Parsons, and then I'll figure out the quarterback position. It might be Trey Lance. It might be an option in the draft. Like, to me, when you look at that quarterback spot, is Dak Prescott worth two all-pro players that might be in consideration for the best at their position in the NFL? I don't know if Dak Prescott changes the math that much to justify the price tag, which is why I think the Dallas Cowboys are absolutely playing this perfect. I get it. The quarterback position is the most important <laughs> the position. The Cowboys are playing it sport. perfect. But I do think there is a threshold where you look at it and you say, this guy may not be worth this amount of money when it comes to the conversation of 
having the return on investment and having their production translate to our team winning when it matters the most. Ask the question again. You said, or let me make sure we have it right. Is Dak Prescott worth two top of the market players at other positions? Yes. My answer is yes. I, if you said to me right now, a like, pass rusher in, re- but here's the other thing: yeah. it's not just top of the market players at other positions. It's two of the top five most important positions when it comes to winning in the NFL. It's pass catcher. It's pass rusher. I would take if you said to me right now, if you're you telling me Dak Prescott <laughs> or Micah and C.D. Lamb, I would take Dak Prescott. <laughs> I think and, Dak I, Pre- and I would say you're smoking rocks. You're well, smoking rocks. Actually, I've never done that. I've never yeah. even done any of that stuff, yeah. actually. I'm as straight edge as could be, but yeah. maybe maybe I should if I'm thinking this way, I'm basically. I'm, I'm just saying, if we're going to credit Trevor Lawrence, right? Friends with so. the president's son. <laughs> okay. okay. You know what? I'm going to move on now. Um, if you're traveling this summer, I do. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to just, just bear with me for a second here because I'm trying to understand. Okay. So he said you can win. Uh, you, you, you're better off getting an average quarterback. Okay. So an average quarterback, look, I'm looking here at the, no, no, he's not. No, no, no. But okay. So an average quarterback. So he's saying you can't pay a quarterback. So I'm looking at the top touchdown passes for the season. Dak Prescott, 36, followed by Jordan Love, 32, Brock Purdy, 31, Jared Goff, 30, Josh Allen, 29, Tua, 29, Baker Mayfield, 28. I would say that Baker Mayfield may be considered an average quarterback, although he just got paid as well. Um, yes, he did. And then you've got Pat Mahomes, and then you have Russell Wilson. So of that group right there, that was the most touchdown passes in the season. That's 26. Okay. Derek Carr is at 25. Definitely average. Lamar Jackson, 24, is not average. Matthew Stafford at 24 is not average. Jalen Hurts is about average and above. C.J. Stroud is above average. So if we – we what's funny is Trevor Lawrence, wow. 21 TDs last year, and he got 55 million. I didn't even look at his numbers for this year. 21 TDs and 14 interceptions. I'd actually say that's average because I'm looking down the list, and he's way down there. Justin Herbert, 20 and 7. Geno Smith, 20 and 9. So let's be clear here. So we're. We uh, we're would be a better team with Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, and um, Justin Fields, uh, Sam Howe, Gardner Minichu. Is, is that what we're saying? Because as far as next year, Derek Carr, Derek Carr would be available. Derek Carr would probably be available. And Russell Wilson, Derek Carr, who had 25 TDs. So let's take away 11 TD passes with the running game that we have right now and see how we do. Um, Jake Browning, 12 TDs, 7 interceptions. Joe Flacco, 13 TDs, 8 interceptions. Joshua Dobbs, 13 and 10. Gardner Minichu, 15 and 9. Because, see, here, here's where it's interesting. Because I'm looking down the list where you have Justin Herbert, who got his $53 million deal. Trevor Lawrence, who just got his $55 million deal. Jalen Hurts, who has the $51 million deal. Matthew Stafford, who's tied with Dak with 40. Lamar Jackson, I think, at 51. Uh, Russell Wilson did get paid, but he would be on the cheap list. So, basically, um, Pat Mahomes, of course, the biggest contract total. Baker Mayfield just got picked. I uh, guess got a new contract, so he's not going anywhere. Tua, who's about to get paid. Josh Allen. Uh, Jared Goff, Brock Purdy, who will get paid, Jordan Love, and then, of course, Dak Prescott. So let me see if I got this straight. The Cowboys are a better team letting Dak Prescott walk, and this is exactly what they said before. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, I'll see you guys in about an hour and a half for our live stream. This shit is getting crazy now. Peace out.